I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And I'm Nathan. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. <laughs> <laughs> So this week, we've done a lot of, uh, in the past, we've done a lot of videos on the Commodore 64. This this week, uh, we're going to bring you some uh, information on the Atari 800XL. I guess information is the word. We're going to play with the Atari 800XL. I'll say, yep. I don't know much information about it. I know a It's bit. cool. I know that if you take the internal shields off that thing, you've just gone through a nightmare trying to get those two things off. Nathan just I picked one. one up, didn't you? Yeah, just got one. I've had this one for about a decade, I think. What's this little wart contraption you got hanging off there? So that's kind of the subject of this video. The S Drive. This is the S Drive Max. It connects via the Atari's SIO port. It emulates a disk drive, not unlike the SD2 IEC uh, for the Commodore 64 we did a couple months ago. Um, you can get these at vintagecomputer.com and... They're pretty neat. You fire it up. It's uh, Arduino-based. So you fire the thing up, and it'll boot cool. right to it. Um, so, you know, we have a TV sitting there doing that. So <laughs> you'll, you'll see a better image absolutely. from this thing, but so, we we have to see it, too. <laughs> so We actually see ourselves, too. So I'll, I'll, I'll B-roll on. some of this outside of here, I think, too. We'll cough 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 cough. Cough. Yeah. So if you want, I can B-roll this so point later on. Goodness. Um. So I don't have my stylus, but Nathan's looking at here. There's a couple ways you control this. Of course, you can see on the screen, you can actually select it on the Atari if you don't have an image listed. Um, or you can actually pick your disk images right off the device. And it came with several that are really neat. Um, yeah, we'll just run this one. This one's really pretty cool. So you see there it shows D1, which is the standard uh, the standard def definition for disk drive one on an Atari if you have a 1050 drive connected. I have one, but now I don't even need to hook it up. So, um, so what I'll do here, you can power this either off the SIO or off of a uh, separate power. It's got an Arduino Uno in it. So the Arduino, we're going to talk more about that in the future. You can do all kinds of stuff. I didn't even know you could do something like this with it, so that's really neat. So what we'll do now... Is that showing here? We're just going to reset this. Atari. Ooh, and it look at that. loads right up to this image. This disk image when boots to it as if it were an actual floppy disk. This is an, a, uh, this is an Atari 800 demo of some sort from some years ago. So, so should I have been sitting there going, nyeh, 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 making the, the floppy disk sound? Oh. So this is a, a this is a pretty neat demo. We're just gonna let this play because it's fun to watch. It. That is <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Is it? The device came with an SD card too, so oh. this was already preloaded. So. Oh, fun! Yeah, because it has the boot image for the device on it. There. So it had a little micro SD card built right in. That same disc one. Interesting how they did the, the various graphics there, you know. That's, that's fun. I wonder I if they modeled that. Seat. Wonder if they modeled that some other way, and then loaded it into memory. Because all this would have to be loaded into memory, and then accessed as graphic, uh, basically plotted to the screen. <laughs> yeah, I saw the demos out there. That's for sure. 
I wonder what settings are in there. No. It doesn't use a lot of colors. There's going to be a lot of reasons for that. <laughs> so when I, when I talk about settings, I'm talking about, so you, you have various modes, graphic modes you can run, much like the Commodore 64. This also has the same thing, same idea, whereas different modes have different resolutions, different color levels and such like that. Uh, keep in mind, this this machine predates the C64. Not this, not the 800XO, but the yeah. 400 8 or in line came out in 1979. Yeah, so I know. that's a full, what, three years before the Commodore 64? Yeah, so well, I think the big 20... It came out in 80. In 80, okay. yeah, it just, just after that. And it um, it doesn't have near the same capability as the house. No, so the big 20 does not. Uh, not even close. The, 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 uh, um, the other one that came out in 79, <laughs> which was the, what, the TRS-80 Coco 1, I think, or maybe it was 80. I'll go back and look. Now we'll put that down. Okay, this was done in 1998. So. Yeah, this is definitely <laughs> one of the later yeah. editions. Look how smooth it scrolls. I mean, the text and stuff, that's pretty sweet. So. Of course, this had hardware scrolling Ooh. in it. This, this box does. So. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the things they had. Yeah. The end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it right back. <laughs> so this S-Drive Max, I've not played with it a lot, but it's already been a lot of fun. I opened it last night. Um, it can uh, utilize tape images like cassette tape images or disc images. It looks like it has some other features because it has a basic display at the bottom. See that? I assume that it actually can see the basic in memory. Not of the no, machine, cool. but maybe from the cassettes. So We'll get some photos of this. We'll put them in here while yep. we're doing this, just so you know. But. So this time we'll select with... Uh, yeah, sorry, Tim and Ian Post. We're making you work. <laughs> hey, that's, that's the fun part. So, so well, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh multi till the one <laughs> yeah a lot of these are really cool but yeah you can use the up down arrows on the atari keyboard without even using control which is nice so <laughs> and uh i do know you can select with the joystick when i have it plugged like up and down so yeah. when you hit return it goes to the disk drive and then unless there's a trick i don't know i usually just hit reset and it treats it like a floppy because it stays in memory on the arduino so oh, oh. No, That's not enough RAM. I guess I haven't tried that one, so I don't know. Let's, uh, you don't have enough RAM? Never mind that. So well, it wants have. a 130XE, the, the final version of the computer, which had 128K. Uh, so, oh, yeah. yeah. I think it had 128K. I've never owned one. So. one. Uh, Can you upgrade the 800 if you want? I've oh, seen yeah. a lot of mappings on the emulators, like Altera, the emulator that suggests that's probably possible, yes. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That must not be the one I thought it was. So let's go to a basic one. Okay, so what do you have on here for, like, original Atari games? Games? Yeah. Well, let's go to the Timmy folder. Let's do... <laughs> I want Personally, I want to see Tron. I, let's see if we can get Tron to load. Tron was one of those games that came out when I was a kid, and I loved it. Much like... In the arcade. I never played it on the 800. Much like the original SD2 IEC video. I didn't yeah. test everything. Yeah. But, but we keep looking over at this side. Just that's where our monitor is to see. It. <laughs> so we can like, see. You guys are there, and our monitors will see us there, and then they have that there. So. I'm gonna leave them on this most time anyway. So. Yeah, I think I don't know what I'll do. It just says hmm. it comes to me as I edit. You know how that goes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can put us in a little one of those little. I may put corner put windows. In the corner, actually, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, all this stuff we got to trim. That would be reset. <laughs> Select this. Select this what? <laughs> A. Okay, I did. I think this may actually work, boys. It something. <laughs> Tron. I remember being in color, though. This is a loading screen. I don't don't push it. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> don't push it. <laughs> Where'd I put my CX40? You gotta have the old wrist-breaking CX40 joystick. So. Oh, love those. Okay, so here's 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 one of the the, the reality of like just my age right so we my parents rather had bought a uh, atari 2600 when it came out that's cool <laughs> i i had that um you know i was born in 1972 so yeah it, it's a couple years ago <laughs> but so like these joysticks <laughs> those came with 2600 and that's what I had for a long time. I find, eventually got like a flight controller type thing for it, but I, it, it, yeah, it, that sounds mad. Oh, that's normal. 
turned out like full sure position did on the Atari or on the Commodore video. I mean, I love me some Tron, but <laughs> <laughs> this is abnormally long. This was the mass produced revision. They had a model called the 1200 XL that had a lot yeah. of differences and did not sell well. They almost immediately discontinued it. And, and then I, they released a 600 XL and 800 XL, only difference being the amount of RAM. Yeah. And this one was, this ended up being the most popular model yeah. of the six models total. Because that, after Atari Inc. was bought by Jack Trammell from Commodore when he left Commodore, yeah. he re released this line as the. 65 XE and 130 XE. Same computers, more RAM. The 65 XE, yep. I think, is the equivalent of this in its new form, and they look completely yep. different. All right, let's go to... Let's look at Quix. Quix is an interesting game. It's kind of a combination puzzle game, an arcade game. Yeah. And the I... version on the cartridge was the 19... There's two versions of Quix for the 800. Yeah. There's one that more closely resembles the arcade, and then there's this one. We'll try... The Atari 5200 version, because I did play it on this machine last night, so we'll always get a look at Quix. You haven't played Quix? Quix is new? You played Quix. I played back in the 80s. Back in yeah. the 80s, yeah. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> hey, I played it in the arcade. I loved it. I thought it was cool. There, it there we go. This version looks different than the cartridge version. That's This looks closer one. to the arcade. Yep. That's close. It, this was originally... I think this is actually somebody has ported the ROM image from the 5200 cartridge oh. to the 800. Was this originally a vector? Yes. No, it was, I think. Sort I think. of. Mm, you know, not, I don't know if the arcade was it, or not. It wasn't vector, yeah. but it was... So, as you can see here, the goal is you got to avoid the sticks, as they call them there. Yeah. Um, and the little sparkly wires coming around yeah. at you. I believe the technical way to pronounce this is supposed to be kicks, which I always thought was strange. I'm calling it quicks. If you go slower, you win more points by holding in the button and moving, but you'll get hit quickly. So, let's go! No. <laughs> Basically, you have to meet the percentage at the top of the screen, or so 65%. You gotta clear 65% of the screen. Let's we'll see if we can do it quick. Oh! Oh, almost made it. Got hit. <laughs> Also, these sparks are on the side. You can't get hit by those either. Also, if you stop, you'll blow up. So you can't My just stop. Goodness. Yeah, it'll come get you. So. Let's try for the high points, eh? Yep. Seventy-eight. Overachiever. I got a thousand. <laughs> I got a thousand points for each percentage I went over. So that's Quicks. Quicks is fun. Oh yeah. The arcade did have a little bit better, like more. Uh, I would call them other tighter graphics, but I think that's just more the fact that it would. It didn't have anything else to do. Right. Um. Man. So now we know my 800 has a busted cartridge port. That makes me sad. Indeed. Or we something's can, wrong. We can fix it. Oh. I died. You died. Uh, yes. I didn't do that. It, it killed poor Timmy. <laughs> so stick that oh. You went right at the dude, man. Yeah, that was a you cannot hurt him. <laughs> got one life left. Little dots in the top right are your lives. It's coming for you. Oh. That looks like 60% or 65%. It's close, isn't it? I thought this was almost like a puzzle game, which I think is neat. I like puzzle games. I'm a fan. Oh. oh. Man. So stick that in your PlayStation 4 and smoke it. Well, I guess I have one life left. Huh? Timmy died. Oh, what are we going to do, guys? Go straight up. Straight up? Seems good. How about this? Go. Oh. oh. There you go. Do, 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 do. Scoring big now. <laughs> <laughs> the points multiply if the stick splits. It's because now you got two to contend with. Ah. Uh. Oh. And that's jittery. Wow. 
little flicker to it, doesn't it? Our play monitor is missing a lot of red or something. Oh! I want to split them. That didn't work out at all. I usually can split them, oh. but I'm failing. Because so many are watching me. The end. Game over. Aww. No sad That's a cool anything? game. That's a game that... Yeah. This was the first home port of it, I think. Actually, the original 82 one. Yeah, that was the home port. Which we'll show I, a video of that right here. But I kind of want some sad music. music. It's not bad, I, but it's not I hard. exploited a bug in it on the emulator. Like, if you get it just right around the sticks, it'll miss the collision and fill the whole screen 100%. That <laughs> happened to me twice. Because I was playing, I was like, this is not the quicks I expected. I expected this one that you yeah. see here, which is... Uh, the Atari 5200 version is what I would call it. Though. Yeah. Uh, um, this was released on several other consoles. It had a release on the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was pretty good. It's actually one of the rarest cartridges for the NES. Really? really? Yes, it is. I, I had it once, but it was like top rarity in the collector's list. So huh. That makes me look it up on eBay. Yeah, it, 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 it is pretty much this one. It's a little smoother, but the music's amazing on it. Like it has, you know, NES was better at that. There were so well, many NES <laughs> cartridges. I didn't know any of them were like yeah. sought after. Not a lot are, but that one's a little, I don't know, just didn't sell a lot of copies or what. But. Huh. <laughs> so, yeah, you that was get, something that was You can get it for the Game Boy. Oh, was there a version for Game Boy? Cool. Really? I did not know that. I just recently found my Game Boy. I did you? Some of my oh, yeah. We need, we need to have a Game Boy episode. The original Nintendo version. You still have a Game Boy? Here's actually, I never here's had the, one. Here's the main board. I had board a Game Boy Advance when I was in my early 20s. Ah, uh, see, I didn't have one of those. <laughs> here's the main board to have a quick actual game. Oh, that's cool. Console. Only $50. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually kind of want to get four AA batteries and see if my Game Boy still works. Right. It Nintendo. was starting to suffer from the uh, quicks for the NES. The the problems that a lot of where the edges of the screen started to get lines. Right. Oh uh, yeah. Here, just for kicks, and I couldn't get this to load because I don't know if it expects basic to be disabled or what. So we'll try that. We could try pole position. Everybody loves pole position. We, we saw that the last time we did the simulation. Yeah, and I don't think it fared any better. So. So we'll try it now, though. Quicks for the Atari, which is right there. Quicks for the 5200. I want to see if they had it for the Commodore. Really? I don't I, know if they did I don't or know not. If they did or not. Of course, I'm looking on eBay, so that doesn't mean it doesn't right. exist. It's just okay. making metal selling it. Golly. Uh, hmm. Here's a Nintendo NES system with it. Yeah, they were a lot more for the NES one. <laughs> anyway, that's like. 10 bucks, 20 bucks, yeah. 150 for that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. Uh, oh. oh. See, this is what happened yeah. before. I don't know why this worked. It doesn't work well. <laughs> 160. Yeah, it's it's an oddball game. Should have held on to it. I could have made some money. Oh, oh that's, that was <laughs> terribly <laughs> unfortunate right there. Yeah, pole position bricked. That was predictable. Every time we do a what video, with, pole position always bricks. I was going to say, what is with pole position? Like, nothing wants to run that. No, because it's such a great game. And there's not, like, a lot to that. That game no, <laughs> runs on a 2600. Dude, dude, and that version even is pretty darn good. One of these episodes, we'll get it to run on something, <laughs> my golly. It's a 5200 version. Yep. Here's for some odd thing. I don't know what that is. Quicks for the oh, quicks for the Commodore sixty four. Oh, so yeah, it was actually released by the original producer too. Hmm. That's that's who did it. Um, Interesting, but it's not a cartridge. It's actually a floppy disk. Let's uh, let's look at let's look at. I found a really cool Tetris clone that somebody had made. That's pretty good. Oh, neat! Well, to see that. Sure, let's see that. <laughs> Good old Atari beeps. Ooh. Quick Street Genesis. Tetrix. Tetrix. Daryl Young. Young presents. It's very joysticky. See? Like you select your skill level. It makes a slam the door on your finger sound, I guess. <laughs> Do I hit the button to start? Oh, it even respects that. Look at that. That's not bad. Fire button's a little touchy. Ooh, I don't like know you if you should. I don't know if you... Like, uh, there you go. Yeah. I was worried there for a second. I'm reasonably okay at Tetris. Oh! oh I 
it's a little weird playing uh, Tetris with the original Atari 2600 stick, you know? Where are you going to go with that? Oh, I don't know if I would have done that. What's that? I guess you're okay there. <laughs> yeah, they put a lot of effort in the sound effects, I guess. <laughs> well, considering this was originally made in Russia. That's true. And this sleeve seems to be a, a single guy Soviet wrote it kind of poor, and I respect that because I, I would actually yeah. love to do things like that. But oh. oh, I can't remember what the original the original hardware they designed this game on. I don't was. know. It was something very Soviet. Well, I, I <laughs> think it was. Like I don't a, know. It really was. It was Soviet. Yeah. yeah. I think it was actually a, a their version copy of like either like the ZX eighty one or the. Uh, that sounds that is, familiar. Like maybe I've read that somewhere. Really, yeah. need another straight piece. Or, yes, I do. Or I maybe the Commodore sixty four. I've copy. noticed this yeah. version is a little stingy with straight pieces. Ah. So if you can hold out till you get one, Man, you know. You really do need one though. <laughs> yeah, that's a Tetris sitting down there waiting on us. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, <Go. no>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that'll get right there. What are you gonna oh, need a long cartridge. Or a long cartridge. <laughs> yes. Because these are cartridges. Long cartridge. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, it's long... pretty stingy with them straight ones, then it'll give like seventeen in a row, so the randomization may be a little uh yeah, we're just gonna have to do this. Oh there. Get a row or two. See now there you we'll go. Get a Tetris. Take that over its side. It would do that. It could have. Yeah. Seriously. Oh. Then, then it gets ah, there there you go. Can't get a Tetris. I only have three. So that's Tetris. I mean, you, you could play Tetris all day long. But you really could. We'll not make the I did What else those, we got? Kid. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. So Probably it looks like the, the quicks for the Commodore 64 was always a floppy disk. Really? That's not surprising, especially in the U.S. Cartridges were far less common for the 64. Yeah. Well, well, one could say they were uncommon for the Atari later, but it was heavy in cartridges originally. So. Yeah. Well, they're actually yeah. a little harder to find in some cases. But you found quicks, so. Yeah, that didn't take long at all. No. I was like, oh, hey, quicks. That's cool. Well, I ordered it. <laughs> I wouldn't it know if this is a killer app, but this is a cool game. Oh, you oh, Star Wars later. fans may like may uh may like this, the Star Wars folk. This is called Ball Blazer. And it's not something gross. Anyway. <laughs> wow. So people were more into sit in the eighties, I guess. Well, our initial thought was, ooh, porn. Yeah. <laughs> it was oh game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A little different. Lucasfilm. By, by the people that brought you Star Wars. Yep. Has a great loading screen. Star Wars and, I first played and this game. Ones. I bought this on a cartridge at Big Lots for the Atari 7800 in 1993. They were closing yeah. out Atari Corps. It was, were, it was that's all where I got that, my first Atari uh, stuff. You could still buy new Atari yeah. games in the mid, early so you, 90s. Uh, you'd walk wow. in the door. You'd walk in the door, turn right, They're and against the, right. the wall. You remember? That's oh, yeah. great. I, they I had 7800 games. I didn't have a 7800. And 2600 too. They, I bought a whole bunch of shrink wrap 2600 games there. Asteroids, most of the classics. Oh, yeah. uh, they were all mm. Atari Corp games, but or Atari Inc. I guess. Yeah. Hi, guy. <laughs> oh, oh, we're loading. Here we go. Old Dreers. Should just jump like... into warp. <laughs> Or Star Drive or whatever the heck. So this is a this is a neat game. It originally I think hit the Atari 5200 as a cartridge release. It even had its own special box that said Atari Lucasfilm on it instead of the normal cartridge box. Um, I don't know if it came out on the 800 at the same time, especially since this version has a 1985 copyright displaying on the screen. Um, because I know the 5200 it says 84. It even says copyright yeah. 1984 Atari because the Food 200 has a bio spoop with the Atari logo on it and says ah. the name of the game. So, yeah. um, actually, that one doesn't say the name of the game. It makes it different. Anyway, the idea is you're playing on a big checkered field, uh, which animates really nicely. Oh, and so you're on this rotofoil thing they call it, and you're the on the your displays the top half. The bottom half is the second player, which is the orange one. You can see there, and you can bump him because it's you know. Whack. And <laughs> you have two goal posts back here you've got to get your ball into. And he has the opposite. And we'll go ahead and select. Give it a one minute play. And we 
you can set your challenge level below. Actually, give ourselves a slight challenge as Droid 1 through 9. This is a pretty tough game, but... Was it running Android? Nah! <laughs> it's, it's where it came from. <laughs> they, they were so ahead of themselves at Lucas. There you go. It was Android OS before Linux even existed. <laughs> so we'll hit start and the ball will eject. And you gotta try to get it first and it just sticks to the front of your craft when you get near it, so... And worth noting is the ball, you're always turned toward the ball wherever it is, so you automatically rotate. That's the hardest thing to figure out initially. Now the other guy has it. See how his screen was blinking? His windshield? That's how you know he's got possession. You can kind of try to shoot it off of him. I think I got it. There I go. Oh! Oh, jeez! Are you almost dying? No. Oh, you died. I'm losing. But but you always turn to face it on the field, which is a little strange. The idea being, I guess, you know, you only have the CX-40 joystick. Oh, gosh, I'm awful at this. I'm usually not this bad. Let's see if I can get some goals here. Dun, dun, dun. Bomb. Maybe we should do better than this. See, you can use the goals. Here's the goals. They're moving there, away. Oh, there, oh, there they bounced. See, you can do this. Oh, I've always thought a real human you can't do with this, but... Yeah! Two points! Two points for Timmy. We're still going to lose. We only have 15 seconds. Oh, jeez! How do you can steal the ball from him? you, you got to shoot it off his windshield first, and then you got to get to it. I always thought if I could improve the gameplay, that's the one thing I would change is that a mechanism to... Two points at three seconds. Really? Oh! That's it. I lost. Have I won in front of you all today? Because I usually can win. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I've beat Droid 9 at least once. I've seen no evidence of that. The last, the hardest one. So. That's a cool game. Yeah. So, if you want an Atari 800, or a 400 even, or a 65XE or 130XE, a 600XL or an 800XL, such as this machine, you need to pick up the S-Drive Max. It is a great device. I can tell already I've just scratched the surface. We're going to bring... I bought it because I needed something to bring the, you know, count to 100,000 program for a future video like we just did recently with the Commodore Assembly versus Basic video. This will allow me to bring that to this machine on because we want to run on actual hardware to get the yep. most realistic yep. Yep. Uh, interpretation. And a lot of things we're going to try in the future. I'd love to write a game. We've, I'm not that far along yet, but it's a great way to go. Can it be better than that? Yeah, probably not as splashy and cool looking, but no. yes. Oh. <laughs> I have a couple oh, ideas for games. It would take us some time to build, but I think we could. Sure, sure. Also, some other, like, for, for the guys who watch this stuff, because we do a lot of ham radio stuff, too, is that you can actually turn an Atari 800 slash Commodore 64 slash Commodore 128 slash TRS-80, any of these things, almost really, yeah. into a packet radio system. Yes. It, we will actually do it. So... We, uh, we're going to be looking at how to do some of that, some of the connection with the 8-bit world that we love with ham radio as well. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. Just so, so the guys who like the ham radio stuff, who like when we do some ham radio builds and stuff like that, also will be able to, to, to do, kind of mesh with the 8-bit eight, eight guys. Well, we've got a lot of that coming still. Yeah. That's not going away. So I know we, yeah. we were pretty ham radio centric over the last year, but we've, Always wanted to keep it balanced, so you know, you're going to see a lot more computer stuff in the near Hammer, future, probably. Ham radio so. is easier to do from quarantine. It is. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we got some more radio reviews down the road and things like that. Hey, guys, I hope you like that uh, look into some of the Atari 800 games that are out there uh, and the uh, the uh, S-Drive Max. I'd look at it, get the name right. It's, I don't have one yet. It's so my toy. Yeah, it's so his far. toy, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the uh, thumbs up button. That really does help us out a lot because then that gets us sent to more people to view the stuff and whatnot. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. And eventually we're going to have some... Uh, shirts and stuff like that coming. Uh, we're working on that Merch kind of coming. stuff. Merch is coming. It's not there yet, but we're we're getting there. Um, we have actually a friend of ours that owns a place that makes all this oh, stuff. Like so see, see some business for him. He's a good oh guy. yeah, he's a good guy, and his prices are actually really really they're good really too. Honestly, there, so. they're, yeah, they're not they're not out in crazy world. So that's a nice <laughs> thing. Yeah, plus, the, the shirts that I've gotten as test shirts, they're actually really like You've good. You've seen us wear well, them in a few videos. Yeah, actually, here and there. So they're they're not prototypes. Yeah, those are prototypes. <laughs> So they were they were 
good though. I'll have to admit. Yeah. But anyway, make sure if you haven't hit thumbs up, make sure you hit thumbs up now because that really does make a big difference. Hit the bell icon that way you can know when we release something because we release on uh, ish around a week apart uh, or so. Sometimes a little further. Last year was kind of hard because well, I mean you know it's just it it was what it was. Let's just leave it that. Yeah, to get together. Yeah, so when you can't get across the town, <laughs> actually, you know. Anyway, so if you like this stuff, make sure you hit thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Yep. Find us on all the socials. Yep. yep. Check us out on Facebook, definitely. So, until next time, I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. I'm Nathan. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. Thanks for watching. See ya. Later. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Three Old Tech Dudes. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new, tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share 3 OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at 3 Old Tech Dudes one on Twitter, and you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for 3 OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.